Hello everybody, welcome to another daily dose of your gaming news uh, and at this time uh, some CES 2023 uh, news um, I still didn't manage to get the time to get like a proper channel update uh, for the for beginning of the year uh, when I have time I will uh, do it but uh, things will uh, keep on going uh, similar to my channel update from December I might even change the title here, I'm not sure uh, because basically everything is uh, the same at the moment uh, not like huge changes that uh, were f like focus like a specific video uh, it's just to maintain the, 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 the continuing flow of gaming daily news, PC hardware, all that good stuff so let's get started um, uh, continue with the RX 7900 XTX uh, situation here um, basically, the power the, and how he did about it, the inference of the vapor chamber issue uh, that uh, he, he managed to, to get through for all the analysis that he did and how he managed to get in that conclusion. It was one of the most logic things. And basically, we have basically uh, official response from one of the uh, AMD uh, vice president. Uh, uh, this is the guy that did the, one of the uh, part of the presentation of the xtx's uh, launch uh, how this guy calls uh, scott heckerman um, and basically it's the vapor chamber and um, specifically the same vapor chamber i think it's like a fluid or water usually it's i don't think if it is water it's distilled water or at least the liquid uh, the lack of uh, because how the situation was getting uh, of the fact that it was uh, basically vapor lock to a certain point it was uh, because uh, and the logic thing is uh, all the water that gets evaporated and then there isn't enough liquid there to condensate and get to the the parts of the contact so it can evaporate again so there was not uh, enough amount of liquid there to make to complete basically the cycle of cooling uh, the vapor in the vapor chamber um and usually it has also a uh, negative pressure uh, because if it has like positive pressure it might blow up of course uh, it, it, it basically it's like a car radiator to a certain point you have to have negative pressure and you have a lot of, uh, to have a lot of um, water circulating there so the, the cycle maintains and keeps the in this case the vapor chamber uh, at a, a baseline of a temperature uh, then depends on which GPU we are talking about and everything. But yeah, basically it's... Um, I, I suppose it might be like a batch that went wrong with uh, with filling with the, with the water because we don't see every vapor chamber and every XCX reference cards. Again, it's the reference cards, not the AIB ones. Um, the reference cards here, uh, because uh, you don't see every, every card XCX reference design um, being returned i think they have, might have some issues with the era rma uh, situation um but i think it might be uh, regional um, like issues because i, I don't know supply chain issues uh, in some regions uh, might be more affected than others so they don't have uh, um, enough stock to do the rmas uh, i don't know uh, we don't have that answer specifically uh, but uh, I saw some uh, articles that were referencing this, that is, uh, they had a, a reply from the RMA uh, guys from AMD to, or the, the partners that sell those cards, telling that they, uh, they cannot resolve the situation at the moment because they didn't have the stock to make the exchange. Uh, but yeah, uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, keep your uh, If you have one of these... Um, one of these GPUs, uh, pay attention to if it is throttling or not. Uh, uh, statistically, it will not be, uh, but uh, you never know. And uh, try to avoid the reference design of the XTXs if you uh, want to buy one of the new AMD cards. And basically, this is it. Uh, I think the situation, uh, it's not resolved, but at least we know what is happening. So it is uh, a, a starting point for to resolve this situation itself. Um, I do really recommend you follow up on PC World. The, this uh, this fellow here, uh, Gordon uh, Hunk, is uh, it's been in, uh, in the um, in the industry as a reporter and everything for a lot of years. He has a good uh, YouTube channel. When sometimes they go deep dive on old stuff 
from the 19s and some of it of the 80s how things go about i uh, like how they go about the the the, GP, uh, the pc diy market um and also from here um I, I managed to get this article here with basically the highlights of monitors i spoke a, a little bit on the monitors uh, so all that is coming this year is going to be more mainstream um there, there isn't like a lot of details because it's basically like a showcase of the technology itself. So we don't have like, I know I, I didn't see anything regarding like, for example, OLED has uh, and mini, uh, not mini LEDs, but OLED has uh, usually has an issue of burning issues. When, you, for example, we have like like this, uh, like in a uh, Excel sheet or uh, or if you're browsing the web with the same um, kind of screen. Uh, there is a possibility of burn-in and usually there are technologies that can avoid this burn-in issue um, that's why usually OLEDs are now being more marketed uh, for gaming because there is a lot of movement on the frame so uh, there is no static uh, uh, OLEDs that stay in the, sa uh, in the same brightness uh, in the same color so um, I think it's uh, it's uh, uh, interesting to see how they are going to surpass this burn-in issue with in which technologies they are going to use but basically from what i get uh, lg is the main uh, manufactured panel for the 27 inch flat screens that are coming out from lg from acer also and from this one asus the rock swift i think these three panels are the same from from lg um the LG one came out like late, late, late last year because they the, they are the ones that manufacture the panel, so it makes sense they come out first. Uh, but yeah, the, basically the panel is the same, um, and of course every uh, every manufacturer after the like the ASUS and ASER they do just their tweaking to the panel uh, depending on what they do. ASUS also uh, has their 24-inch uh, 1080p, uh, now it's reaching uh, 540 Hz, it was announced like 500, but it's uh, 540 here. Um, the stand itself can uh, extend, depends on what you want to do, it's just a gimmick for me. Um, but yeah, there is also LG Flex, Corsair has this one and uh, also seems to be uh, LG. I'm not sure if it is the same panel from LG. Supposedly it should be because LG manufactures their own panels. Uh, and usually it's around 45 inches this one, this specific one for Corsair and LG. Uh, Lenovo I think uses the same panel of, of, of LG. I'm not sure. This is... I think it's OLED. No, this is a mini LED. So it's not the same panel, sorry. Um, it's a 4K one. We are, going, we are going to see from Samsung a lot of huge, huge panel, 59, uh, 49 inch and 50 something inch also. And they are uh, basically 1440p and 4K monitors. Uh, this one, this one is like putting two uh, 32 inches uh, 4K monitors side by side. It has the same effect. And this one, the 49 inch is like putting two 27 inch 1440p monitors side by side. It has the same thing. So it's like a dual monitor setup for all intents and purposes without the, the tearing on the screen. In, in uh, uh, You don't see the border of the screen of each one, which is uh, if you <laughs> if you like to do this, uh, I think it's it's overkill for me, at least for what I like to do. Uh, but yeah, uh, Acer also has a 45-inch uh, 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 monitor here, and of course, all of these widescreen are um, are curved monitors. Uh, I'm not sure uh, where is the the radius here. Usually, it's around 1,000 uh, radius. Uh, but I think the flex one from um, Corsair that I spoke previously, they can uh, put like. Uh, 1000 uh, R and 1600 R, I think. And I think it has three positions for a more aggressive one for 800. It's usually the three positions that you see re regarding radius of the monitors. And we have also here, of course, MSI. MSI usually has good, um, has good monitors. Uh, this is a 40 inch. Uh, it's uh, like a ultra wide. Uh, I don't know how they are calling these huge ones. This, like for example, the Neo G9, G95, and C's from Samsung. It's oh, they calling super ultra wide. I don't know. <laughs> this is 
the, the naming mono, mono culture is is completely ridiculous but uh, okay at least we have choices which is very good and we are seeing uh, they are coming about around starting the 27 inches to this uh, monstrosities of 50 something inches we're starting like one thousand dollars which is kind of okay it's a new technology like OLED display um, and usually they are fast and they are very good and usually it's kind of normal when they introduce it giving around this kind of price tag uh, which is not bad I think so we need to wait a little bit for the technology self matures more manufacturers come with more uh, different panels electronics usually also manufactures some panels for other brands we need to wait and see and for sure they will start to creeping a little bit down by the end of the year a little bit more on the prices and basically for today uh, regarding cs i s i've been seeing a lot of stuff but it's so much information and i try to condense the best i can to bring you like a, a specific topic uh, so uh, i would ju i just wanted to wrap up this uh, 79 xtx uh, issue here and bring you at least like the wrap up of the monitor so far that came out from CES and uh, I saw a lot of laptop interesting things here but we covered that with basically CPUs and and GPUs for uh, AMD that they're, they're coming out in uh, yesterday's video uh, because the rest is they just put it like a little bit of bigger screens now it came, comes in 16, 18 and 14 um inches uh, screens with uh, some of them with oled and of course with the new amd stuff uh, as an internal no major things regarding for example i know keyboards i didn't see anything uh, worth noting uh, not even like battery technologies or nothing like that uh, so basically it's uh, i think amd is going to rule the the, the laptop stuff this year because they have very very good stuff like low power uh, high performance stuff uh, so the batteries will last longer and we have at least the same performance with lower power so i think laptops this year are going to basically belong to amd for good or for bad uh, because usually because intel still tries to brute force uh, in terms of performance uh, against amd which brings uh, the 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 issue of you need you need to have uh, more voltage so more deliver more power to over performance um which is not that good uh when you put it on a laptop the battery doesn't last long so kind of remove the necessity of a laptop um but yeah uh now regarding games i've got the free game stuff from epic game store we, we have uh, still uh, until the tw 12th of january we have kerbal uh, space program the first one and we still have the shadow tactics icos choice expansion next will be this first class trouble never heard of this game might be a good one i don't know uh, i don't have the slightest clue what this game is about then we have some GOG free games collection. They have uh, a huge variety here. Some of them are very old games, which is usually the case here on GOG. Good old games, as you can imagine. But we have like Elder Scrolls 2. Uh, we have Postal, the first game, which is ancient. Um, Beneath the Steel Sky, very well known. Biomanis, uh, it's also a, an older one. Uh, we have Gwent, which is a very good game. Uh, hello neighbor i saw yesterday i was looking here i saw so quake 2 rtx um shadow warrior classic we have a lot of uh, interesting games like older games that uh, are uh, it's free you can try it to see how things were back in the day and i'm going to finish up with games uh, in steam so this is my wish list we have shadow tactics of the shogun it's like four bucks and the bioshocks remastered are again uh, on sale uh, five bucks each and of course i managed uh, i did this highlight here for marvel's midnight suns it's still 33 percent off um i will leave the uh, in the description the links for all of these games uh, it's good prices even here my uh, midnight suns like one month uh, it's a very good game i've been um I've been following up 
um, Christopher Hotz um, gameplay here already on the uh, episode 70 just uh, I need to watch this one it's a very good game the only the only thing I have to say about it that it's not that good it's the enemy variety the rest very excellent story wise if you like Marvel stuff it's very good uh, some deep cuts there on the lore I I don't I don't know I just know the basically the MCU histories here and there from the characters uh, but yeah the Midnight Suns which has a Hell Rider uh, and uh, Scarlet Witch and other uh, less known characters from the Marvel uh, universe but the gameplay is very addicting is very very uh, smart the way they they go about it and even the uh, strategic layer of the game it's very good i really really uh, advise you to get this game if you can and for today i'm going to wrap up here uh, with my go get funding uh, for me to upgrade my pc to get better and more content for my private clients uh, i want to also to start giving some video content for them uh, video editing and and all that stuff and also uh, upgrade my game on um, the image editing and compositing for them and of course in my free spare time doing these daily videos and resuming my gameplay uh, gameplay series and with all that said i hope you have a wonderful day i'll see you in the next one so until then tunami master out